and of course if, if you look at how animals can see different ways is is so amazing you know they have a completely different picture of, of, of this universe like the cats they they don't see any other colors you know? they just see these shades of red which indicate temperature and that's how how they perceive the world like a pink world you know <laughs> and then some red and, and maybe shades of yellow I have no idea but you know that's that's about it and, and there's other insects like with with these eyes which are made of out of hundreds of tiny eyes and each of these eyes brings like an image so they have like a, a, a view of the world in a in, in hundred times uh, you know image you can't even imagine you can't even imagine how they perceive the world and, and there's there's so many strange creatures you know? And there are strange humans also, you know, some people who have this disease called Daltonism, they don't know the difference between red and green. You know, just imagine. To them it's the same color. <laughs> so they also get a <coughs> rather different picture and I mean they're people. You know. <laughs> and in also, it, it changes on a perspective. Like, if I put the bell like that, you know, you, you get a completely different picture than when I put it like that. Or when I put it like that. Or maybe, you know, like, like that. <laughs> it's a different bell. Every time, you know, it moves. So, hmm. so, so I mean, it, it's the same with, with the other senses. No? Like, our sense of smell is nothing. A dog could, could smell probably on my bell how many cats I have, you know. <laughs> but I can hardly smell the bell. And uh, hearing, I mean, for starters, if you record your own voice and then listen to it afterwards, you think, oh, that's not me. Because what other people hear is just what, you know, kind of sound waves that come out of your mouth but I hear them also from inside you know, through, through my skeleton and brain and flesh and everything so uh, but even then I mean there's, there's, there's it's, it's, it's very how do you say abstract you know, sound how it travels very far and you know it's like air waves but even then in empty space there can also be sound and then how does that work I mean I have no idea no? And, and and we certainly don't hear very well no? like again dogs no they can, they can hear a lot more than we can I mean, there's lots of frequencies, no? which we don't know. We just discovered that elephants can talk through a little hole here in, in, in their forehead where they make some ultrasonic sound. I don't really know how to describe it, but in any case, we can hear it. And they've been talking to each other for, well, ever. Uh, while, while people were around, you know, you have these working elephants you know, you have no idea what they've been talking to each other about us uh, all the time, you know. <laughs> Amazing, no? Amazing. So, uh, in any case, we, we don't hear very well, we don't see very well, we don't smell very good. I mean, <laughs> we, we, we can't smell very well. And uh, touch also, no, the, the touch, that's another one. No? So this is largely empty space, and my hand also must be in largely empty space, no? So, and, and so I can't even touch this bell. It's the empty spaces of my hand who are touching the empty spaces of the bell. <coughs> taste, I mean, like, like taste of things change depending on which order you've eaten them in. 
like if, if you have a, a professional wine taster, you will have some bread in between every bit of wine, otherwise one wine will affect the taste of the other. So it's all very, very complicated and uh, we have no clue what's around us. I mean, I'm not saying that from this we can say there's nothing around us. There's something here, yeah, definitely, but what we experience from it is certainly not the truth. It's a very personal, personal, human way of, of perceiving things. And we do a lot of, of recoloring also. We fill in a lot of blanks with what we've seen before. And uh, like, like like when watching TV. You know, TV is a flat screen, but all the time we fill in the 3D. You know? Somebody's coming and we say, "Oh, look behind your back!" You know, it's a bad guy coming with a knife. But there's no behind the back anywhere on on the TV screen. It's a flat screen. But we we still do that, and, and we actually do that a lot in 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 real life also. Uh, I mean, we see 3D now through our two our eyes. <laughs> a lot of that we actually just compute no? in our minds, and, and, and our mind gets all these signals, uh, energies through the senses, and from that creates a particular image. So this reality. We can't really uh, say that what we get there from our senses is, is in any way relevant. <laughs> relevant for living, maybe, yes, but not relevant for understanding it. It's like in this movie, The Matrix. That's nicely done. Huh? There are also, you know, you have this guy. At some point he understands the illusionary nature of that universe created by a computer and then suddenly starts seeing everything as just energy you know, or data moving everywhere, but nothing real. You know? <laughs> well, it's the same thing what we are experiencing. I mean, that's also what science will say. If you ask science what is around us, they will say, well, it's just a play of energy. Energy moving, energy becoming more condensed, and then, you know, it looks like matter, or less condensed, and it becomes like, you know, air, or maybe more vibrating, vibrating and it looks like fire, light, that's, you know, just all energy. <laughs>